Welcome from the First Presbyterian Church in Burbank. We're glad you're here. Let's join the service now and hear the proclaiming of God's Word. Children are leaving for classrooms. Please turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. We'll try and keep track of these boxes. Sometimes when we send them out, we, we noticed a few years ago they went to Peru. Another uh, year, I think they went to Colombia. Uh, and they kind of go in groups. So when we do find out, if anybody finds out, let us know where they went to. And, and then we can be assured on Christmas Day that uh, just the, imagine the children opening the boxes up and the joy in their hearts. Thank you for doing this. We are going through the Sermon on the Mount, and that's found in Matthew 5 through Matthew 7, uh, 5, 6, and 7. There are parts in the Gospel of Luke, but we've looked at Matthew's Gospel during this time. Our plan is to get through the uh, Sermon on the Mount, the greatest sermon ever preached by Jesus. He's the one who preaches all the great sermons, amen? And uh, the greatest sermon ever preached, Matthew 5 through 7. We're going to go, we've been going through this series. We will finish this up. Uh, the last Sunday of this year, December 30th. But we're going to take a break during Advent season. Advent begins the first Sunday uh, in December. Uh, And so we'll take those four weeks and do something about the Advent theme. But the last Sunday of this year will be our last uh, time to go through this series, Sermon on the Mount. Listen to the word of the Lord, the words of the Lord. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you, you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoured, uh, devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And in verse 25, Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They they do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry, worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Isn't that true? As we go through the Sermon on the Mount, we look at the section, verses 19 through 34 of chapter 6, and we find that Jesus is talking about what are the important things of life. What are the things that we should focus on as opposed to what are the things we often focus on? But as I begin the message today, I want to say that uh, one of the things that uh, I look at in my life is, is one of the things that inspires me is courage. As we've been going through the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus has been calling us to lives of courage, to live differently than the world lives their lives, the people of the world live their lives. We're called to be different for Jesus, to live as though we're in the kingdom of God. This is what the kingdom of God looks like, live with courage. Paul Harvey, radio personality from not too long ago, used to tell a story, uh, he told lots of stories, but one of them was about a guy named Ray Blankenship. Ray Blankenship lived in Ohio, and one day, as he was looking out his window, he was fixing breakfast, looking out his window, there was a storm outside, and he noticed that there was a strong flood, a current that was going by his house down the street uh, in, in the drainage ditch. And as he looked outside the window, he saw a little girl struggling 
and being caught away by the, the water, and his heart just broke. He ran outside, and he began running down the street to try and grab her out of the drainage ditch, and he couldn't do it. So he threw his body in and grabbed her and wrestled her, and the two of them twisted and churned and turned in the water. Now, he knew that just not too long away, there was a, uh, a culvert, a, a, a drainage ditch, and if she were to go in that, she would be drowned. And just before they came to the drainage ditch, a few feet away, he reached out and he held on to something he thought was a rock. And sure enough, it was. And he held on tightly and he thought to himself as he held the girl, if I can just hold on until the firefighters come, we'll be okay. But he did better than that. He was able to, by his strength, pull her out of the drainage ditch and saved her life. As Paul Harvey said, this man, Ray Blankenship, was awarded the Coast Guard Silver Life Saving Medal for his act. But the award was fitting because Ray, who was showing his selflessness to save another life, didn't know how to swim. That's amazing. With no care for his own life, he threw himself in the water to save another person's life. Jesus said in the scriptures, greater love hath no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. Or as it's translated in the message by Eugene Peterson, Jesus says, this is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You know, when we talk about courage today, I, I think this last week showed a lot of courage on behalf of a lot of people. I think of a sheriff who ran into the borderline bar and grill to save others, and he was shot, and he was killed. I think of the fires that are going around Camarillo, the Woolsey Fire and Thousand Oaks, all the areas there. And, and it's not just there, it's all the way up to San Francisco and beyond. I mean, there are fires all over the country, uh, all over the state. And I think of the firefighters who are out there, the first responders who are out there, courage to put their lives on the line. Imagine if they all said, I'm just going to go home now. I'm very grateful for people who think not of themselves, but think of others. This is the way Jesus lived. This is the way he commends us to live. And on this day, this Veterans Day, I'm tremendously reminded of those who have enlisted or have served in our military with thought of our nation and our country. Because of them, I'm safe. My family's safe. I think of those veterans, and I want to honor them. We do this every year, but I want to do this now just to uh, say a little piece of gratitude to those who served in the military. First service, we had several stand up. I'd like to ask those who serve or are veterans here in this place today to, to stand up for a moment that we could at least say, uh, give you an applause and say thank you for your service. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. You know, I'm reminded on this Veterans Day of those who would serve our country, who teach us that there are greater things in life than stuff. They teach us that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are things that matter. And that's what Jesus was getting at in our text. What are the things that really matter? As you leave today, uh, not too long from now, as you leave, I want you to go home with that thought. What are the things that really matter? What are the things that matter in this life? What are the things that matter for eternity's sake? That's what Jesus was getting at. In our passage to the, on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus told us what is truly important. I want to read this again, uh, verses 19 through 24, but I want to read it again from the message, from Eugene Peterson's translation of the original of the Greek, the Koine Greek. Jesus said, don't hoard treasure down here where it gets eaten by moths or corroded by rust or worse, stolen by burglars. Stockpile treasures in heaven where it's safe from moth and rust and burglars. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is is the place where you will most want to be and you'll end up being. Your eyes are windows into your body. If you open your eyes wide in wonder and belief, your body fills with light. If you live squinty-eyed in greed and distrust, your body is a dank cellar. If you pull the blinds on your windows, what a dark life you'll have. 
You can't worship two gods at once. Jesus said, loving one God, you'll end up hating the other. Adoration of one feeds contempt for the other. You can't worship God and money, both. Notice that Jesus gets right to the point. Notice that he says money. Now the word he uses both in Hebrew and then in Greek is mammon, which is the God of wealth. You can't serve God, the God of the universe, and wealth or money at the same time. Jesus could have said he can't serve God and the God of pleasure or the God of this or the God of the harvest. God, Jesus gets right to the point. You can't serve God and money at the same time. Why? Because if you can't let go of your money, you're worshiping it. Money tends to be the hardest thing to let go. It always has been through all cultures. In fact, when we give to God, what we're saying is this, Lord, I trust you, I need this, but I give it to you because in your hand you can do all things and you can take care of me. And in that way, we are showing the Lord that we are worshiping the Lord. I'm trusting that God will take care of me. Money is not the thing that matters. I'm showing that God is the thing that matters. God is the one who matters. I've had the privilege of doing hundreds of funerals in my life as a minister, and I can tell you this, as ridiculous as this is going to sound, you already know this, I have never seen one person take their money with them or their possessions with them. In fact, there's only one thing that we can take from this life to the next, and that's our character. That's it. That's why it's so important in this life to be taking all the stuff that we have and saying, God, this is yours. Use it as you will. You gave it to me. I can give it back to you because when I give it back to you, I can't outgive you. You're going to give it right back to me. And the more I give to you, the more you sense that I can be trusted with it. How stressed we are about money. It holds the most power over us. Now, true that money is not the problem. Let's be very clear. We know this. Money is not the problem, and Jesus had wealthy friends. We know that in the scriptures. He had very wealthy friends. We're told in the scriptures what we learn from Jesus. It's the love of money that is the root of all evil. In fact, it says from James, the love of money, or another way of saying it is lust for money brings trouble and nothing but trouble. Going down that path, some lose their footing in the faith completely and live to regret it bitterly ever after. You see, something you already know and I know is this. The important things of life are not stuff. They're not money. And if we put our focus on those things, they're going to rob us of the life that we have. God gives us all things. But when they control our lives, we're robbed of life. I believe that Jesus in his day looked around and he saw people stressed. And he saw people who were poor, who couldn't pay their bills. And he hated what stress did to them. He hated how his people were robbed of life. And I would even say that today, Jesus hates what is robbing us of our lives right now. What matters? Life matters. God has given life to us. It is a gift. But how many times have I squandered my life because I'm worrying over this or worrying over that? How many times have I squandered the gift of life because I'm too stressed to appreciate it? Jesus looked at the crowds. I would even say Jesus is looking at you today and saying, my son, my daughter, you're not living. You're in slavery. Jesus, again, let me read his words. If you decide for God, living a life of God worship, it follows that you don't fuss about what's on the table at mealtimes or whether the clothes in your closet are in fashion. There's far more things to life than the food you put in your stomach, more to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body. Look at the birds, free, unfettered, not tied down to job descriptions. They're careless in the care of God and you count far more to God than birds. Has anyone been fussing in front of a mirror? Ever gotten taller by so much as an inch? All this time and money wasted on fashion, don't, do you think it makes that much of a difference? 
Instead of looking at the fashions, walk out into the fields, look at the wildflowers. They never primp or shop, but have you ever seen color and design quite like them? The 10 best dressed men and women in the country look shabby alongside them. I need to hear those words of Jesus, don't you? Because I believe Jesus looks at us and says, why are you so stressed? Why are you so anxious? Life is a gift. God gave it to you to enjoy it. Are you worrying? Is that worry killing you? Does anxiety rob you of joy? A long time ago I learned when it came to money that uh, money isn't the stuff of the earth, that it's something God gives to us as a tool. And, I, and, and I'm trying to learn in my life how to be a good steward of it. God, you give to me to enjoy the money and to give money back to you, to say, God, this is yours. And if I learn that, then I become less stressed about money. God, you gave to me, I can give back to you because when I give back to you, you give back to me. You're gonna take care of me. God, you will take care of us. But where I'm really having a hard time and I confess to you this morning is when it comes to anxiety. Because I don't know what's going to happen to me tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen to my family. I stress about everything. I stress about church ministry and, and how to reach the community for Christ and, and, and how to do things the right way. And I wake up burdened and stressed. And I think Jesus must just go, Ross, come on. I got this. You don't got this. And the more you think you got this, the more of a frenzy and a chaos your life is. And what I'm learning in my life is when anxiety comes over me, it affects my body, soul, mind, and spirit. Studies have been done that anxiousness, anxiety, and stress is killing us physically too. People are in, healthy, in, in health crises because they're too stressed. I had a conversation with a noted psychologist in the 1990s about the type, topic of stress. And he said, Ross, I, here's what I've discovered in all of my years, my decades of studying uh, people and stress. He said, what I found out is this, that there was a time in life where people had adrenaline. We have adrenaline. It's a gift from God. We all have adrenaline. It's the fight or flight um, experience that we have. Adrenaline makes us fight or run away when a crisis happens. It's a gift from God, adrenaline. He said, but, in the, and this was in the 90s, he said, but I notice now and studies have shown that people are living in fight or flight every moment of their lives. And the body's producing adrenaline all the time. And he said in the 90s, we've just crossed the threshold that studies are showing that a, a, a stronger type of adrenaline called cortisol is being produced in everybody's bodies all the time because we're in stress all the time. And the cortisol is causing permanent brain damage in people. Friends, that was 20 years ago. Where do you think we are today? In an era when we look at our phones every moment, where we're dictated by social media how angry we should be. I think we're dying. And I think we're dying emotionally, physically and spiritually. And I can see Jesus weeping. My daughter, I love you. This is not why I created you. I gave you life. Therefore, Jesus said, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink. Or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food. The body, more than clothing. Life is more than money. The bills will get paid. If we put our trust in God, we allow God to work in our lives. But if we don't trust in God, we're closing the doors for God to work. God is good. I want to remind you, you already know this. God is so good. Jesus told us that God is our heavenly father. Now I know as a father that, that I would give my children anything I could. 
True, I wouldn't give them all they wanted because some things I'd go, no, no, that, that's not going to help you. But if there was a way to give them anything, I'd give it in a moment. Here, take it, I love you. And the Bible says that I, as a human father, are nothing compared to our heavenly father who loves us more than we know, who loves you better than you love yourself. Who is concerned for you more than you're concerned for yourself. He who did not spare his only son for your salvation. Why would God say no to anything? Now, God will say no to the things that won't create your best person. God will say, no, no, you don't need that right now. But sometimes we are so busy with stress and anxiety, we close off God's giving in our life. When I was young, I sat in a church, and I remember uh, uh, one of the children's messages. I was sitting there, and the message was about a father and how good a father can be. The message was about a father who had given his daughter when she was young, three years of age, had given her a very beautiful necklace that she put around her neck. It was costume jewelry. It was plastic. But she loved it. A couple of years passed, and the father came to his daughter, and one day he said to his daughter, Honey, can, can I have that necklace? And the girl said, Dad, this is my, you gave this to me. I love it. And Dad said, okay. A few years later, he came back again. Honey, he said, can I have your necklace? Can you take it off and give it to me? And the girl said, Dad, this means everything to me. Finally, as the girl became a teenager, just as she turned in teenage years, the father said, Honey, are you ready? Can you, would you give me the necklace? And the girl with tears in her eye took off the plastic costume jewelry. She wept because, and her father knew that it meant so many things beside the stuff. It was memories and everything. But she placed it in her father's hand. The father took that, that necklace and placed it in his pocket. And out of the other pocket, he pulled a box. He said, honey, I've wanted to give this to you for years. And he opened up a diamond necklace to give to her. That is an illustration of who our Father is in heaven. He is going to give us all the good stuff. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of the plastic stuff. I'm tired of the costume jewelry. But as long as I hold on to that stuff, I keep myself from the fullness of what God wants to give to me. But as I say that today... My life has changed. I can admit to you that one time it used to be about stuff. It used to be about the diamond necklaces that God could provide. I no longer care about those things. A couple weeks ago, Jesus talked about the treasure and what the treasures are. This morning, he talks about the treasures in heaven. He says, don't look to the earthly treasures. Look to the heavenly treasures. We interpreted what treasure meant. And I can tell you this morning that the treasures that Jesus talked about are different than what we think. Because I happen to have come to the conclusion for my life that the treasures in heaven one day are not stuff, they're not money. They're people. They're people. I long one day to stand before Jesus and all my life is in preparation for this moment, I believe. I long to hear the words of Jesus if it came to mansions and glory and treasures in the crown, take mine. I don't want them. All I found here is for Jesus to look at me and say, Ross, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's all I want. That moment, I live for that moment. I am sure Jesus will not say, Ross, well done, thou good and Wow, wealthy servant, look how much money you accumulated on the earth. I am certain Jesus will not say, well done, now good, an intelligent man, you certainly solve mysteries. And I'm very certain Jesus will not say, Ross, well done, look at all the stuff you acquired. I just long to hear Jesus say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I happen to believe that the treasures on earth and the real treasures on earth besides life and the gift of life are people. 
One of my favorite passages in the Old Testament comes from the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter, the third verse, in which the angel is talking to Daniel about the end times, talking to Daniel about those who will be in heaven one day. And the angel reminds Daniel of this. He says, Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. Those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. I want to shine like the stars. Those who lead many to righteousness. Oh God, that's all I want to do. Is lead people to righteousness. Now I know I can't do that. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Not mine. But in this life, if I dare to live my life in courage, loving people like Ray Blankenship who jumped in the water when he couldn't swim, if I, if I live this life and enjoy the gift of life and, and say to stress, no more will you dominate me, and say to my money, no more do you have control over me, I worship the living God who owns all things. And the more I give, I proclaim that I live in the kingdom the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of this world. And one day, as Jesus says, well done, thou good and faithful servant, I want to see all the people who inspired me to live for him. And I hope to see all the people who came to know Jesus and the grace of the Lord Jesus because I dared to live my life for Jesus now. Friends, I believe that's all that matters. Don't you? God loves you. God will provide. Give away your costume jewelry. God's got better things for you and for me. Let's pray. Oh God, we live to trust in you. Forgive us when we focus on stress and anxiety. Forgive us when we hoard and hold on to things. We can trust you. I pray as we leave today that all of us would know what really matters. What really matters are people, your children, your people. May we live bold lives and courageous lives that people might come to the well of grace and find Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. We hope this service has been a blessing to you. We also invite you to join us to worship in person on Sunday mornings. We have services at 9.15 and 11.15. Thank you for watching, and may God bless you.